and can't believe it is already May, which means it is time to give you another tour of what's growing in our Melbourne vegetable garden. I can't wait to show you because there are so many things growing right now that were not here a month ago and that I never thought I would be growing here in Melbourne. Let's get going. I've got to be honest with you, I am pretty proud of this setup at the moment. What was going on here is my snow peas were growing up a couple of makeshift trellises that I had, but they were just getting too big, too bushy for the trellis. And I really wanted an archway. I'd seen these beautiful archways. And I was racking my brain and I ended up seeing our greenhouse and thinking, I don't think I can turn that into an archway. So I had to very delicately try and untangle all my snow peas from what they were set up on. Using this black tie here, which I had left over from my tomatoes, I've tied it up the side of this greenhouse structure and it's now looking very happy. These snow peas taste amazing. They are the easiest things to grow. They grow so quickly and the taste is like nothing you can find in the supermarket. They are so good. You can see I've already actually eaten heaps of them. Mm, 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 mm. So over here I have my sugar snap peas. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Beautiful. What you got there? Vicky. <laughs> over here I have my sugar snap peas, which are not growing as quickly as my snow peas, but they're still not doing too bad. And I'm getting my first flowers over here, which means the very first of my sugar snap peas are starting to emerge. And we are really excited about this one because we love sugar snap peas in our family or sugar snack peas as my son says what do you want oh careful 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 got it how is it good i've got my other sugar snap peas over here in amongst the remaining chilies and you can see this one actually has grown its very first pea yeah oh there's another one that is super exciting if you're in melbourne or anywhere with a similar climate at the moment you can happily put these seeds in the ground either this month or over the next couple of months and they should do really well over the winter period I'm going to show you my purple broccoli next, but before I do, just a little reminder to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. That way you will get a notification anytime I upload the next garden tour. Let's keep going. Here is my purple broccoli. You might remember this one was a $1 seedling that I picked up from Bunnings. It had holes all through it. These are the original leaves, obviously. So they discounted it. I seem to have resurrected it pretty well because look at that. The center of that actually is starting to look like a real broccoli. I've used the shelving to house some of my pots. So in here, this is wild rocket. They came from QP seedlings. Down here, this is spinach. I chucked a whole lot of seed in and grew those from seed. Down here, this is some sort of kale, red kale or purple kale also from QP. And down here, more parsley, which I grew from seed, which is not particularly healthy. So I'm tempted to give up on that lot and try something different. So this pocket of pots is strategically placed because this is where I get the most sun at the moment. There's a real combination of what's planted in here and where it's come from. So this is one of two lots of broccolini that I've planted from seed that are growing pretty well. These two lettuces were planted by the kids. Lots of the others didn't survive. These two. And? Oh, you're right. I've got quite a few from QP that they sent being celery, 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 rainbow chard, fennel, kohlrabi, fennel, more celery here and yellow, yellow cauliflower at the back. Oh, also radicchio. Radicchio in here and that's a red lettuce at the back. There's more of that in my veggie pod. Again, I'm still experimenting what to put where. So we've got red lettuce, I think red butter lettuce perhaps 
and radicchio. They're all looking really happy and healthy. My <laughs> lettuce is over here, oh, Coles lettuce, and not looking very happy or healthy. These ones are from Bunnings. And I'm not sure why these just aren't doing very well. More parsley at the back, doing well, and more coriander in here, also doing pretty well. And these guys, total surprise package. Still growing strong, and new ones are sprouting. Would not have believed it a few weeks ago. How oh, good. Wait, another one ripening up. This one. What about the snow peas or the green beans? Is this spicy? Yeah, that would be very spicy. We have pulled most of our chilies out now, except these guys, which have not finished they're growing. This space gets a lot of good sun in summer, not so much in winter. So everything that I've planted here is pretty much a double up to make sure I do get a really good harvest of whatever's growing because I don't have full confidence in how well everything in here will grow. I'm still loving these food coverings that I picked up from Aldi and I from Kmart to protect these veggies, they work a treat even though I haven't secured them down particularly well. The things outside are getting eaten, whereas the things inside are not. Under here, purple cabbage. I have that upstairs as well. These two are orange cauliflower and more protected orange cauliflower. They've got some basil growing in here. Over here, I have spring onion. These are from QP and fennel at the back there. That's a random spot to put it, but I had excess. So it's just a test to see how well it'll grow here. The things in the pots, however, I know I can always make sure I keep them in full sun. I've got another pocket at the back here where it gets a lot of sun. Purple kale down here, which I grow from seed, which probably is too close together. I might have to thin those out. Here is one of my many Brussels sprouts plants that will hopefully become very big. That has grown quite quickly. I also have Brussels sprouts hidden in amongst my mint. I know I'm a bit random. And I have more Brussels sprouts up the back here. For some reason, these Brussels sprouts have been attacked by aphids, whereas those ones haven't. Go figure. So I just sprayed them all off because all the other methods I've tried to control aphids don't seem to work. Getting a hose, spraying them off, and then just removing them with my fingers seems to be the most effective way of doing it. If you've got any great aphid tricks, leave me a message and let me know. Over here, some more lettuces that have been transplanted. They don't look particularly healthy at the moment, but I'm hoping they'll be fine. They're much happier if they're planted straight in the ground, and next time, I will be planting them straight in the ground. Another surprise package. My green beans are still going. They are still going. Oop, that one's come off. Got my purple carrots growing at the back there. I have thinned them out, but I think I need to thin them out again. Still, they're growing well, and they're pretty happy there. This compost is now full, and I'm leaving that to work its magic for a few more months. Spinning it every day or so. Ooh. And I've started filling up this one, only just. Where are you going? This is me. This is my very last tomato plant that is still standing, but if you have a close look, you'll see why I can't commit to pulling it out just yet. Very much slowed down on the production of tomatoes, and it's very much slowed down in terms of how quickly they ripen. So it won't be too much longer before these are out. This parsley is still doing well. Coriander next door, not so much. This coriander, however, is much happier. This is the whole lot that I planted fairly recently from seed. In amongst my coriander, I have my surprise potato plant that I planted a thousand years ago and then forgot about. And now you can see that potato plant is doing quite well. And over here, I have my herb garden. So this herb garden is almost entirely thanks to the delivery I received from QP Seedlings, which is that video 
I posted a couple of weeks ago. Sage at the back there, basil, more little baby basil, Thai basil and fennel. I haven't grown fennel before, so I have fennel planted in a few different random spots, including right here. The fennel leaf is used as a herb, I believe, and the bulb is used as well. So that's why I've randomly planted a fennel in here. It's easy to forget about this lot because it's so subtle over here, but this is oregano. I have restructured my veggie pod a little bit so that it now opens that way. And you can see in here, I have a whole lot of kale that is ready to harvest. I have brought my scissors. Tuscan kale is something I am loving cooking with at the moment. I would never have bought it from the shops, but I gave it a go just because it's in season. I've been frying it up in a pan with a bit of garlic, butter, and a sprinkling of salt, and it tastes better than you could imagine. This area at the back here wasn't a great space for growing vegetables until we incidentally had a tree removed that we were losing some really huge branches from that became a safety issue. Some of them fell down, huge branches fell down on the trampoline. Now, this space at the back is getting some really good sun. I've also put a bit of effort and time into this garden bed in terms of fixing up the soil. So it was quite hard with the soil that we had directly from the nursery. We'd bought veggie garden soil, a combination of compost and manure and other things, but it was still really, really hard. But since I have put some time into fixing it up with homemade compost, adding perlite so you can see. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, darling. You can see in the soil there's a whole lot of white spots. That's perlite that I've added just to um, lighten it up a little bit and help with the drainage. And things are now growing quite well in here. Some kale at the back, you can see I've harvested lots of. Those leek that I'd nearly given up on in my last video, which I mentioned, are now doing heaps better. My beetroot seeds that I planted directly as seeds are growing and those that I have planted from the QP delivery are looking really nice. Rainbow chard here, also looking very happy and healthy. If you want some tips on cooking with rainbow chard, chard, I don't even know how you pronounce that, check out the video I just uploaded on Honor and Pa's garden tour. There's some great cooking advice in there. Let's bring onions at the back there from QP. And my broccolini here, I actually started these in a greenhouse and then I transplanted them. Have a look in there. Whoop. That's broccoli, your broccolini, first broccoli heads. <laughs> I like broccoli. Over here, purple cabbage, just a punnet that I bought from Bunnings. And then two more Brussels sprouts plants at the end there. They will not all fit. I will have to pull one of those Brussels sprouts plants out, I imagine, but I'm just gonna wait and see which is the strongest one. If you know someone who's got an amazing vegetable garden in or near Melbourne, let me know in the comments. I'll put my email address down there. I'd love to hear from you because I'd love to come and do a tour of a few other awesome vegetable gardens in and around Melbourne to get some other great ideas for what the possibilities are in this climate. If you wanna see where I was at last month or if you're watching this video a few months down the track and you wanna see what came next, check out the playlists tab and the vegetable gardening vlog playlist is where all my garden tours are. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Yes, yes, you could, yes. I did it. You're still going with your capsicums. Yum. Still loving them, aren't you? If you like what you've seen, hit the like button. I will do one roughly every month of my garden and in between you'll get tours of other gardens too. Thanks for joining.